Here's my foundry setup. Um, got a little bucket down here. That's where I drop my dross. This is my furnace right here. I've got my little plant sit down there, sitting down there at the bottom. Uh, that's my blower over there that runs in, and it's sitting on a box that's full of sand. So if there's any spilling, it's it's got a hole in the bottom of it in case you know crucible breaks or something like that. It can run out the bottom. But, uh, so this will allow it to run on it into that sand and not onto my, um, my concrete floor. I gotta, let me get the lid that goes on there. This furnace is actually made in three sections. It's got the bottom, and then you can see there's kind of a middle section and an upper. And the idea of that was is that you could lift that middle, lift it from the middle, and that's what these straps are right here. They would come up and you could lift it from that. Um, I haven't ever used it and if I built it again I probably wouldn't put that middle section. The idea was that way you could lift off the furnace and have your crucible just sitting there and make it easier to grab with tongs or something like that but the the idea of lifting that much of the furnace while it's that hot just never really appealed to me so and you'd have to lift it so high to get it over the top of the crucible um, that I just have never done that. This is how I lift I lift it. I just got a pipe here. I lift the top off and it goes up to a uh, there's a load binder up there. Okay, so to lift it, I put these hooks in. And pull up on the load binder. Lock it in place. You know, like that. And then I just swivel this off to the side. So when it's open, it's like that. Okay, this is how I light the furnace. Just light a match. Light a little bit of newspaper. I'm gonna poke that down in there. Just need something to light the propane. Turn on the propane. Get it flame it up. Go about there. And then plug in the blower. There we go. Today. It's just a piece of pipe that I welded a bottom in and put some lugs on it where you can lift it. And I've got a couple of handles that are just some rebar that I bent the end and welded a handle on. You use those to pull it up out, and then you hook another one back here to tip and pour. I've also got a, a, graphite, a couple of graphite crucibles that I bought um, that I can melt aluminum in, but it just doesn't melt near as much as this, and I'm planning on pouring a lot today. I'm getting some packets ready for um, to put in the the melt of aluminum. You've got to degas it before you pour it and uh, flux it while you're while you're heating it in right before you pour it uh, to keep the dross out and to uh, makes it more liquid and uh, supposedly and uh, it also uh, protects the the melt from oxygen I'm getting into it quite a bit the degas knocks the bubbles out so that when you pour it it doesn't um, your pour doesn't have a bunch of bubbles in it and what I'm doing is I'm just taking a, a about a teaspoon of this degasser and I'm bundling it up in some 
packets of aluminum foil which I can just push down to the bottom and stir in. Now the flux they say takes a half a pound to a pound per surface area per square foot uh, surface area of your melt. I don't know how much surface area I have and I've never used quite that, that much so I'm just going to do a heaping spoon and this is this is some stuff I got from a company that's out of business now but um, you can get basically the same thing at, at uh, budget casting supply there's also um, things you can you can use that you can get at the grocery store this is sodium carbonate sold as super washing fluid it's different than sodium bicarbonate which is baking soda you can use this for degassing and I just picked it up at Walmart this is Morton Light Salt, also got it at Walmart. It's a combination of potassium and sodium, and you can use it for fluxing. Just use the same amounts as in the previous clips. Okay, we're gonna put a spoonful of flux down there in the bottom. Then we're gonna start loading in aluminum. All right, so the aluminum that we're gonna use, I've got some, some buckets. This. This is some old barbecue grill that I broke up. And then I've got a bunch of these from a project that I have. And they'll they'll fit down in there, but I want to get I want to get a bunch of this going first because these will melt a lot faster uh, once I can stick them down in a in a puddle of wet aluminum. So I'm gonna start with a bunch of this barbecue cast and kind of get it going. So, here we are with a charge. I'm going to set it down in there like that to start with.
All right, and we'll go pour it. All right, we're set up to pour here. I put some bricks on it. I had one lift on me the other day. I don't know that this one's big enough to do that, but I'm just making sure. Okay, well, let it cool. All right, this is our pour. You can see we had quite a bit of shrink in our uh, sprue. All right, let's break it out. This has been sitting out for, I don't know, a couple of hours maybe. From the time we poured it. I wanted to wait a little bit and get cut down on the smoke. I don't know if you've seen some of my other foundry videos, but ooh, the smoke gets to rolling. First look, it looks really good. I found these brushes work really good. They're called parts brushes. Uh, you get them at uh, automotive su supply houses, you know, like uh, Napa or something like that. They're supposed to be used with a parts washer, but I found they do a really good job. They're stiff enough that they'll, they'll knock this sand off, so you can, you know, you don't lose. You don't lose your sand and you don't you get almost all of it off before you start working it on your equipment well here's all of what we poured yesterday it's the next morning and uh, there's our four pieces for the flasks and a dozen knobs and two discs for the 12 inch sander that we're making and there is the handle, the blank for the uh, speed handle for the mill. This has got all the sprues, all the gates cut off. And you can see right there. And actually on these, the knobs and on these uh, parts for the flasks, I was able to grab the gate with a uh, pair of bolt cutters and nip them off, which then made it where I could set these in the bandsaw real well, real easily. And... Uh, cut that off. On these I couldn't really find a way to get a hold of them in the band saw so I had to cut them off uh, by hand but it wasn't too bad. You just kind of score it really well and hit it and it'll bust off like you can see right there. 